Hey guys, Dave here, and welcome back to another episode of FFB War of the Visions. Um, this is kind of like, yeah, I kind of empowered the news, but I'm talking about it. Uh, JP is approaching its one year anniversary, and there's a lot of news, um, a lot of good changes, but there's one change that's pretty controversial. Um, you know, it could make the game better, or it could make the game a lot worse. Um, and I want to go over, you know, the positives. And the negatives, all possible positive and negatives for that, um, and kind of see what you guys think as well. So the, the video has been broken into three segments. Segment number one um, is me going over the general news. Segment number two is me going over the controversial part of the news. And section number three, I'm covering Titus and Luna and the new vi vision card for Bahamut that are all coming out because I figured why not, right? And so those are the three sections. Um, it's going to be a long video, but there's really nothing to visually look at until the end with the vision card and stuff. If you just want to see the picture, um, all the rest is in Japanese. So, I mean, listen to it if you're interested while you're doing something else. I think a lot of people do that regardless. Um, I, I do that like I'll, I'll be multitasking and watching like a video for... Uh, one of my favorite YouTubers or something while I'm doing something else. So I encourage you to do the same. Don't wa don't waste your time watching unless you're maybe studying Japanese and um, you want to follow along or something like that. All right. Um, but other than that, let's just jump right in and take a look at the first section, which is the news. And there might be a little bit of overlapping contents because I think I put an intro in that. But just deal with it, okay? Also, I recorded with the music on. It said 5%. And when I listened back, it was pretty loud um, compared to my voice, which sucks. But there's really, I don't want to go back and re record like 40 minutes or however long it was. Um, so I, I apologize in advance for that. And if there are difficult to hear areas, please let me know and I'll be more than happy to fill you in in the comments below or on Discord. Okay, take care. I mean, let's get started and jump in. <laughs> All right, guys, so what we're going to talk about is right here, uh, the version 3.0 update. Now, this is the one-year update for the game, okay? Um, and there's some very controversial topics in here. So, without further ado, let's take a look. Now, the first item here, like, why aren't they numbered? All right. Um, so the top one there, the new function, I'm going to come back to that because that's the biggest controversial item. Uh, the second one here, kill, uh, these are two uh, positive things um, that I see. So first one, guild quest. Um, it's probably going to be some boring piece of crap quest that you just hit auto. So not real content, just more clicking, more clicking. Get, up, get back on the hamster wheel and give our shareholders some numbers. Yeah, so that's what it looks like. But the, the purpose of this, other than giving the shareholders more numbers that people are playing the game when they're actually just clicking like zombies and not enjoying it, um, is the guild statues right now, for example, they I think they use the lion, uh, you know, as attack, and what is that, like HP or something like that? Uh, they added like accuracy and something else. So uh, more stats that you can get for all your units account wide by modifying your guild statues and it showed th four levels and the fourth difficulty was uh, locked out so it's probably going to be uh, a piece of crap auto quest one more boring thing you're going to need to do with energy or resources um, make trying to make you spend more um, but what it could be is something that's free which would be positive, right? We gotta be positive. And the other thing that could be positive is, um, you know, hopefully it's like a manual event where it's actually like a challenge. That would be nice to actually have a challenge because like, why do you play a strategy game like this in the first place? You know, I play it to strategize, to think and to play, right? Hitting the auto button and then go that's not playing. 
So hopefully they take that and put a positive spin on it. Okay, uh, number two for Guild. This, um, this is a very nice change, okay? Um, with only, you know, a couple possible negatives. But let's talk about how it works. So in the barracks, uh, right now you can only do jump points. Uh, in, as of 11.14, you will be able to switch from job points to unit shards. Yay! Uh, so, units like Gilgamesh cost 100 UR units. You will be able to get one shard per 24 hours. Sounds great, right? Wait, it gets better. I mean worse. So, you have to keep that unit fed for 24 hours um, and I know like right now I love to keep five units in the barracks and I, I have 15k uh, unlocked for that and that's only like three and a half hours so that means uh, you have to log in like every three and a half hours for that to do it um, oh yeah and you have to interrupt your sleep to do it too right because you're gonna have characters that you want the unit shards for then you're gonna want one chip on JP, Ew, you're gonna want JP on some too. Um, so this is gonna, it's gonna be good because you're getting the shards, but the fact that you have to keep them fed is uh, bull crap, okay? So there should be uh, like a, a switcheroo button where you know, like you can switch from attack to defensive team in the guild. So you can switch from JP, so give like five slots for JP and then just give like two slots for the barracks or something like that would be like the correct way to do it in, in my opinion okay uh, so you have to keep them fed 24 7 so uh, 100 cost units I like that um, then for your limited time and your I think 70 or 80 cost units uh, I'm assuming like Eileen and like those fake UR units uh, would also be considered uh, two a day units and that's going to be every 12 hours of feeding or every two a day if you kept them completely fed for those. So the, the most positive thing is for those units, and it's because um, if they're limited time, uh, I'm sorry, Thancred's also limited time. Uh, but anyways, limited time units, you will be able to get shards for them and max them out. So if you have Thancred and you keep your barracks um, fed 24-7, for 600 days, you have a max level thank grid. Congratulations, only 600 days. And by the time you get him maxed out, he will be completely power crept and worthless. Congratulations. So, and then the final one is for MR units. And MR units will all get three a day. Uh, I'm assuming like MR and lower. Uh, sounds like you might even be able to get SR shards from that, which is of cool too uh, but no definite details okay uh, the guy standing behind the producer in the video I'm taking his exact words he said it's, it's not finalized yet okay but they have a pretty good idea so that could change and that's coming to JP it could change it on JP they could change it on global um, so don't look too much into it but if you can get the um, limited time things that would be awesome okay uh, next, let's move down to vision cards. Um, so vision cards are going to get their own exclusive awakening material. Uh, so right now they use the rainbow yarn. Um, then they're going to use, I don't know, like rainbow cookies. No, it, it's like some yellow orb or something or pendant it looked like. Or it would almost look like a chochin, a Japanese or Chinese lantern. So I, I guess that'll be nice. But if they're both bottlenecks, like what the heck is the point, right? Um, you know, I think it's just that could be like a negative change because like let's say you pull on banners and stuff and you have you have like a unit heavy account which is like one of the patterns um, that you can have and you get all the rainbow yarn from getting duplicate units then they split this crap up and then you want to level up some vision cards well guess what you need a new resource and you didn't get any vision cards so you don't have it more money please yeah, so that's a possible negative for that. Uh, next, um, all um, espers, 
couldn't think of the name in English, Shokanju, will get a three-star awakening. Uh, so this, I guess it's good. Yeah, uh, constantly going up. Um, but it could be better if it was an actual challenge. So if any of you have played FFBE, um, when Siren first came out, three stars, moderately hard. But when Ifrit came out, holy cow. You needed like two tanks, um, and, and I think you needed um, like a single target tank and a multi-target tank. Um, but whatever, right? It, it was difficult and it was, it caused you to strategize and think in a thinking and strategy game. Uh, you know, goal accomplished, good job. So hopefully this time, instead of just like an, uh, you know, like having Lucia shoot Engelbert in the back to get your, um, your three elemental chain and then hitting auto, like hopefully it'll be manual to the point it's so hard that you have to do manual and you actually have to think about it and that not everybody can do it right away. Because um, instant gratification ruins games. All right, UI um, stuff. The first one, I, I don't understand where they're going. It's kind of vague. Uh, but some reverse lookup screen for quest overview. Um, so I guess like if there's one material you could see where else it drops, might be kind of cool. Um, the second update, um, better status for weapons. Uh, not better status, uh, better status details for weapons. So this is one thing I think my very first YouTube video, the beginner's guide, I kind of like chew them out on it. Um, but it's basically pissed that this game has been out of here and now they're just adding something like this. And it might still suck because their interface sucks, quite frankly, it's, it's piss. Um, like you pull up a weapon in the shop and it gives you like a description, like who crafted the weapon, like what their favorite color shirt is, but it doesn't tell you what the freaking stats are on it. So if you don't have a data miner or go online, or actually try crafting it, you're never gonna know what the weapon does. This is the dumbest thing. It took them a year to realize that. That should have been in the game since day one. Like, give me a break, dude. Um, next one, something auto. Uh, when you do an auto battle item, um, uh, stay suit. Yeah, cause uh, Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what they're trying to get there. Uh, but something like with your current quantity, there'll be like an overview for that. That said, it's going to be improved. Uh, next, vision card UI improvement. Um, like we don't even have the update, so they're going to be updating again. So two updates ahead of us. Um, then your match battles. So we have auto and manual. They're going to be easier to do. Okay. All right. So manual. Yeah, I could see maybe you could make some improvements for that, but auto. Like, right now, you, I guess you do, you have to hit the auto button, and then you have to hit go. Auto, go. So maybe what they're gonna do is, there'll be an auto button, a go button, and then a third button, auto and go. Like, that's the only possible improvement you can make with that. That's ridiculous. Um, I, I have no additional words for that. Uh, then friend and user Oh, so this is actually really nice. Uh, this could be fun for, you know, like Discord or something like that, or competitions. So you can actually have a spectator mode for your battles. I'm guessing this is free match only, but that's pretty cool. So I, I really like that. Again, that should have been in the game since day one. No excuse. Um, next one, battle. Uh, partial AI improvement. Okay, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Um, one thing we mentioned in Guild uh, for AI improvement, or, or not Guild, on my Guild um, Discord that people pop on, is the possible introduction of Gambits from Final Fantasy XII. So Final Fantasy XII, um, what is a Gambit? It's, it's a macro, it's a mini program. Uh, if X, then Y. That, that's all it is. Um, and then what you can do is you can program, you know, like, if drop below 80% life, then use Cura or something like that, all right? Uh, and then the characters would do that. So that would be pretty cool. That would be awesome. That would be amazing because it would turn the strategy game, 
which now is a flaming pile of poo, because uh, it's 99% auto mode, into an actual strategy game where you have to strategize about strategy by choosing how you want your character to fight. That would be absolutely amazing. Alright, and then the final stuff here, um, SSR and Below, which is um, uh, MR and Below, will have uh, voice acting. This is partial, I think they said they're eventually going to do all of them, but maybe in batches. Okay. Uh, next, Royal Rank 12 and above will be released. So hopefully they, um, not, uh, what is it called, uh, Sakama Water, it's, it's pretty sad when I think about the uh, Japanese word before English. Um, Hopefully they go retroactive with Royal Rank based on how much you've uh, purchased there. So that'll be nice when that's released. Uh, then tutorial update. You know, if you're watching this video, you've already gotten beyond the tutorial and who cares. Uh, home screen update. wonder what that's going to be. Uh, like another cute emote for all the waifu characters. Who the flip cares? Um, then uh, title background music update. Okay, like how many people just sit on the title screen and watch it? Raise your hand. Okay, I can't see any hands raised. Yeah, nobody cares. All right, and then the last thing, application icon update. What? Like you, you can't, you, you spend time on that, but you can't add like real manual content? What? Yeah, it kind of doesn't make sense. All right, so that is the end of those updates. Now we're gonna move back to the first one, which it's just labeled new function, <gasps> new function. So um, I'm gonna talk about what this new function is and why it's controversial. I'm gonna just cut the video real quick and then pop back in. All right, we're back. So new function, uh, what this is, it's not a new function. They don't understand what function is, it's a feature, okay? Uh, this is a new feature of the game. Uh, what it is, they mentioned it a couple videos back. They said mid-November is coming, which is true, 1114. It's going to be, uh, they said, you know, mastery levels. Um, now, I don't think it's mastery levels. Um, they said, like, uh, wow, it just started raining really hard here. I think we have a hurricane. <laughs> Sorry. Um, EX jobs are going to be released. So what is this? It means that your job levels go up to 15. Now the mastery thing, if, if that's something separate, um, yeah, I've read all the news and watched the video, I didn't see anything specific about that. I, I think it's kind of one and the same. If I'm wrong, please let me know, okay? Um, but we're gonna talk about the job ranks, all right? So we're gonna talk first about the positive stuff, right? Because I, I wanna see this game go into a positive direction. The positive thing is that once you get your character to 99 and max out all three of their jobs to level 15, um, that character will then be eligible eligible to increase their job rank. Now, in the video, they only showed Monty and they only showed his main job of Lord. So you might be able to do it for all three jobs. And I would assume that you probably would because they're probably going to be adding an outer border to the board. Uh, but I, I will test it out on the 14th and I will make a separate video on it because this is big news. I normally don't cover the news, but this is game changing. It changes strategy. Um, and that's what my channel is about. Okay. Um, so yeah, it, it's going to increase the level from 15 to 25. Now I'm assuming that when you hit 99 and get all those to 15, you're going to get like a soul medal, which is kind of like uh, FFBE, where you had like the rainbow prism with the character's icon in it, and you're going to use that plus a new diamond resource, which is kind of probably be in place of the job thing, plus it looked like a plant, and then you're going to use that new a new level of farmable or buyable ha -ha, resources to level the job up an additional 10 levels. Okay, so that's how it's going to work. Okay, now what is good about this? Number one, uh, it is good because games like this, it's about constant improvement, constantly striving to be the strongest, um, like, like a never-ending um, cycle and whatnot. 
Um, so with like out power creeping destroying the game, you know, you can increase everything um, and then nothing gets left behind, right? You know, that's the ideal situation. I mean, hopefully that's where they're taking it. So like constant improvement, that's number one. Uh, number two is uh, augmentation of fake UR units <clears throat> and, and another weak units. So what do I mean by fake UR units? I mean, you know who I mean. Uh, Mosheri, Oldie, Robin, uh, Eileen, right? Like none of them are UR. Some of them aren't even SR level um, and whatnot. Like Mosheri, right? Um, because they tried to, they attempted at a hybrid and they failed. Rosa, they succeeded because they actually added the stats for both that were needed with her and the weapon. But Mosheri, no, not at all. So this gives an opportunity for them, uh, which I think is a, a, a BS excuse, but that'll be in the negative section, um, to improve those units. So with that information, I see that as very positive, okay? Now let's go on to the negatives. Greed! Yeah, so the reason I say greed is this is another bottleneck for you to have to pay money to get over. So you finally got all your stuff to 99, and now you want to get it up faster. Well, they're going to you know stick their hand deeper in your pocket and siphon out more money. Uh, now, with number two for the positives, and the reason I said these are interlinked is because if my Sherry is weak, just buff her. Just buff her. Don't put it on a vision card that the people have to buy. That's being greedy. They're just trying to stick their hand in your pocket again. Right? If they take a character and nerf them, people are going to be pissed. And probably lawsuits because people paid for a certain product and it was changed. Uh, depending on their... Um, license agreement and whatnot, they may or may not be protected against that. But if they take a, a unit that's weakened and then improve that because they made a mistake, you know, there might be a couple people upset because they, they if they had known, you know, they would have done something. But that's, you know, like just regret. Um, most people are going to favor something like that. So they could have just done it, but instead they're doing it through vision cards to get you to spend more greed and they're doing it through this. Hey, look, it's a new way to improve your character uh, when like, it's, it's a way for them to, you know, like make other characters stronger too, but it's also a way for them to get more money out of your pocket. Greed. All right, so that's, that's one reason there. Um, and it's the greed factor. And the other reason is a lack of trust. Okay, if, if you played FFBE, this is exactly the same thing that happened with Seven Stars when that came out. Okay, Seven Stars came out, and they said, oh yeah, we're going to do this, and uh, like Seven Star units, they were, what, like at least 500 to 1,000% stronger than a lot of the Six Star units. Like you could just take in, um, gosh, who was it? Um, the guy with two swords, Luna or something, that was a completely useless unit before, got turned into like a a boss and he just went in and like did like a 200 chain or something or 150 chain on bosses and just one shotting bosses that before were really tough so so that's what the seven stars did so hopefully um this doesn't jump up like that hopefully it's a small increase maybe like 10 percent 15 percent um because otherwise you know people are going to get n new units and if they have the, the units that are upgraded uh, in stages, which we'll talk about later, then those units are going to be way more powerful than the other units, and it's going to create an imbalance in the game. So in FFBE, they basically a lot of the limited time units and a lot of the other units, they just didn't get a seven star upgrade, period. Um, and I got like a limited uh, Roberta or something on JP, the global one and it wasn't upgraded to seven stars properly and I, I was pissed because I you know I spent money on that it was a seven star or a six star unit and it didn't get its upgrade and I was pissed right so they said in the video they said they listed the first batch which includes Aldoa, Aldi, Monty, Stern, regular Stern 
um, plus other, uh, what did it say, fixed units? What, what did, oh crap. Base units. That, that was the words out of his mouth. Base units. So what is a base unit? Is that, does that include Warrior of Light? Does that include uh, what everybody in Global is now saving for, Kane? Is he a base unit? Or is base like an only an FFBE unit and not any collaboration units? So that's something that they should have been forthcoming with. There's, which takes me to my third point. Number three is they need to plan in advance. Okay, um, so if you're going to launch an update like this with characters, you need to have a roadmap and tell the players where the game is going. Um, like the problem with this, all right, like let's say everyone's aiming for Kane now, right? You're going to get Kane. Well, he's strong now, but like on the current JP power creep, right, he's, he's already lost some of his um, appeal because better units have come out and whatnot with better trusts and stuff like that. And after, like, assuming he does get level 25 jobs, is he going to be good? That, that's another thing that you really have to think about. So that, that's probably the biggest reason I'm making this video. It's going to take your character planning, and it's going to flip it inside out, turn it upside down, throw it in a blender, put it in the toilet, flush it, and throw a hand grenade in the toilet while it's flushing down and then feed it to a skunk and run it over with the car. I mean, you basically can't plan anything until you have like the new stats for the characters. You know, we're, we're completely in the dark now, right? You, you, you might get the unit and then once we hit that four month um, lapse that we have with JP time difference, you know, your, your unit could be it could be a lot better, could be slightly better, could be the same, or it could be a piece of crap, right? So you might have like Orlando and maybe, you know, Lightning isn't the flavor of the week anymore and he gets pissed on. Whereas like Eileen, they finally give her the agility that she needs and she's like a god in PvP and, and like all types of events and gets like a quadruple hit like uh, some other units for raids, right? So we have no idea what is coming for that, and it basically flushes all character planning down the pooper. I mean, there's there's nothing else to say about it. Uh, we'll know about some of the first characters, but that's only really like Old Doa and some of the other units. Uh, we don't know, like, even if limited time units will be counted, right? Like, until we know, there's no way. There's no way. I'm even going to think about pulling on the FF4 banner. That, that's like a stupid move. Like, they do realize that the global community watches everything that they do on JP, right? You would think so, right? Um, so I guess, you know, that, that pretty much covers everything. You know, positives and the negatives. Um, they will be... <laughs> They'll be releasing more details. Um, and I'll definitely cover some more... Once I know, I'll make another video. Um, I at least have some of the characters. I at least have Monty at 99. I'll try to get his job stuff um, in the next couple days by farming it. So I can see that, like what it actually adds. And I'll make a separate video for that. Um, so again, this could like make or break the game. Um, that's how big of a thing it is. Uh, if, if they're greedy, it's going to break the game. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're already super greedy. I got super pissed off the other day because the Exorcist card, I, I got it. And um, I probably spent, you know, like in the neighborhood of 300 plus L pots trying to farm the stupid Whimsy shop. Not only that, but you have to babysit the, um, I had to babysit my iPad or emulator, whatever the heck I was using at the time, um, to make sure I was there when the stupid thing went off. Um, instead of just using skip tickets, I wanted to get resonance too. Um, so there was, there was no bonus shards in any of the Whimsy shops, and there were no shards in the regular shop. It was just the three guaranteed in the Whimsy shop. And like if you only have like 100 to start out with, you need 175. So that's a lot of Whimsy shop spawns. And it was taking anywhere from 600 to like 1100 plus energy just to spawn at once. 
Now, I think the longer you wait, it's more, but that's just pure greed right there. And I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. JP players complained about it and it's already been fixed, right? But they didn't fix it on global yet because you know, they're sticking their hand deeper into your pocket, right? Deeper, 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 deeper until they get slapped. They've already been slapped on JP and they pulled it out a little bit. But they're seeing how they how deep they can put it on global, which is completely underhanded. Um, it, it's wrong. It's devilish, is what it is. Um, but th that's the kind of producers that we have on this game. So although it's fun, they're trying to siphon every last dollar they can out of you, and it's completely wrong. Okay. So uh, that's all the news I have for that. Um, I'm going to go cover some of the Final Fantasy units because uh, Titus or Tida, Tida in Japanese and Luna, uh, the details have been released for those. Okay. So let's pop over there. We might as well, since we're already in the news. All right, so here we are. Um, I'm not sure if you heard or not, but Titus is going to be a free unit. Um, and you can, as you can see here, his level cost 80. So again, that goes back to two uh, shards per day. Now, these units, I'm pretty sure that they're limited time. Um, I think it probably says it here somewhere. Um, period. I can't imagine them. Yeah, uh, Kikangente. Oh, Kikangente area for the chocobos. So, yeah, that pr pretty much means limited time. All right, so Titus, he's going to be a free unit, but you're still going to have to get the shards. Um, so a lot of people are like, oh, he's going to be garbage because the, the free, um, like, URs and FFBE were, you know, they were, like, MR level or weaker a lot of the time. Uh, but they did have, like, good trust sometimes. So hopefully he's not garbage. But let's take a look. Because he actually looks decent. Uh, so it could be a positive thing. Alright, his new main job is... Abes Ace. I don't know what Abes is. Abes Ace? I don't know. The Paladin and then Samurai there. Um, his limit burst... Uh, Ace of the Blitz. And it's a 4 chaining large damage ability. Uh, it's going to be Slash and Water. Uh, then Quick Trick, which I, I read it before. This is basically a steel time that does damage. Um, moderate damage, uh, low CT drop, and self agility up for one turn. So I don't, I'm assuming the agility would be less of a thing because of the CT thing. Uh, I mean, the damage, sorry. Uh, and then Haste Ga, it's AoE Haste. All right, and then his master ability, it's, it's the typical new pattern that we've seen, plus uh, his, which is um, defense piercing up 20. So pretty cool there. Um, Yuna, now I think this is going to be like a must-get unit for everybody, and I'll explain why. Um, so she has a new job here, Spira no Shokan Shi, okay. Uh, Spira, Summoner of Spira. Um, I, I guess Spear is like something from Final Fantasy X. I don't remember much from that game. And then she's got um, Midori Madoshi, which is Green Mage, and then uh, Konne Tsukai, which is... I'm not sure what that's going to be. I guess Spirit User or something in English. It hasn't come out yet. Um, then uh, Shooting Ray. This is her limit break. Um, it's a pretty interesting AoE range. I think that'll be pretty effective. Um, it's just um, guaranteed hit, which is 100%, not 200%. Um, so like reflex will still work against it because that's 200% dodge. Um, but then it, it's large damage. So that's pretty cool. Uh, now, the reason I said she's like a unit that probably everyone is going to want to aim for is because of this ability here called re-raise. So if you've ever played FFBE, like re-raise was like everything. And boss fights because they <laughs> made them so hard that you needed this but basically this is what Halloween Halloween or I use um, zombie mask does so you put it on the character and then when they die uh, as long as the buff hasn't been debuffed or, or run out then they will come back to life uh, now I don't know if this is going to be based on the targets faith or it's just going to be guaranteed like we'll it'll be remain to be seen uh, but that's still pretty cool. 
Uh, but the other thing is, you know, if she's a unit to go after, uh, that'll all depend on whether there's actually content that would require you to use this. I, I guess it'd be nice for PvP and stuff. Um, but if there's, like, actual hard content in the game, which there hasn't been thus far, then that's going to be a super ability. And then, and then just Holy right here. And then her master ability is uh, 10 AoE resistance. So, I mean, that's pretty much it. This is a hard quest. We're probably just going to get a bingo board. JP's still doing this annoying piece of crap that's forcing you to log in and do a quest every day where the bingo board... Uh, you still get the same amount, 120 shards, and you can do it at your leisure, which is a much better system. It's so like JP, they still have it split. They got rid of the purchase one, but um, yeah, we have it better than they do. Then next here we have Bahamut Vision card. Um, so, you know, the, since Bahamut's the king of all whatever, he's got magic up, agility up, and at max level single target attack resistance up and then followed by um, if you're a holy unit or light unit you get magic attack up for the single and then omega flare is like an aoe large damage uh, what a double hit void magic attack so that's kind of cool so that means it's going to do like a lot of damage and aoe but the problem in this game is it takes so long to build up the espers, and the fact that you can only use them once, they're going to have to rework the entire esper system um, in, in order to make summoner units like um, Yuna like work out and stuff like that. So, I mean, right now, it's, it's like 100% worthless to invest any points in the top of the esper tree for the damage, because it just takes so long, like it's never gonna happen in PvP unless it's like two Engelberts spanking each other. And it's, you know, if it happens in PvE, like you only get to use it once a match. So like you're losing out, like all the damage that you're losing out, like 15% on your other attacks and like the resistances, the more damage you take, like that's gonna be more beneficial that helps you every turn always than like a one turn thing, right? Now, if, like, Yuna can come into battle and cast Bahamut the first turn and then get, like, the Vision map ability, or the Esper map ability thing right away, that, that is the only way that they can possibly redeem the current Esper system, the, uh, system in game. Because other than that, it sucks. So, um, that concludes the news, and that concludes my video. So, um... The purpose of this video, again, you know, I'm not trying to make money with these videos. I purposely don't put advertisements in. I, I snuck like um, a um, donation link below, but I've never mentioned it. Um, so if you don't care, then who cares, right? Um, but the, the main purpose is you know, to try to get you the information you need to you know, make intelligent decisions on this game. And you know, with this update, there's a lot of controversial things that could either make or break the game. Yeah, I'm hoping that they're going to take it in the positive direction. Um, and, and the fact that they released some of the information and said it's not finalized, um, hopefully, you know, like in a good case situation, they did that on purpose to see what the player reaction would be to test the waters. And then they can, you know, base it on that. So if they did that, that was smart. Uh, but knowing them, they probably didn't do that because you know of all the lack of the planning lack of planning that I've seen in the past with this game uh, especially FFB was uh, really bad with that but again I'm gonna you know cross my fingers and hope for the best because uh, I want to see this game do well okay uh, so again uh, thanks for watching or listening uh, probably listening because there's like nothing fun to watch I'm just reading I'm pirating the news uh, but this time, it, it's game-changing, and that's the only reason I'm doing it. I, I normally wouldn't just read the news. Alright, so uh, thanks again, and I will maybe see you on another episode if I don't quit um, due to discontent from raids and other boring crap like that. So, take care.